The Home Tech Podcast is supported by you. To find out more, go to hometech.fm slash support. This is the Home Tech Podcast for Friday, November 15th from 67 degree freezing Sarasota, Florida. I'm Seth Johnson. <laughs> thought for a second there you might have forgot where you live. <laughs> Pregnant pause. Uh, and from Denver, Colorado, I'm <laughs> Jason Griffin. How you doing, Seth? Doing well, doing well. I imagine you staying a warm. A little bit cold. Well, I mean, any day that I don't have to turn on the air conditioner in the garage, it's quiet, is a good day. It's a good day. <laughs> Yeah, that's right in my wheelhouse, man, mid- mid-60s. Uh, yeah, we- weather's been good here. More importantly, Seth, big week for home tech. Yes, yes, absolutely. If you if you didn't hear about, well, I don't know how you couldn't have heard about it, but we joked last week that we were going to do this uh, this assistance shield, and man, did we we did it. Like, uh, we got this product out in record time, and it's, it's on our website live. <laughs> like, so if you go to uh, assistantshield.com, we got that domain premium domain <laughs> dot, it's the dot com it's not dot io none of that garbage no, no assistantshield.com no. head on over there and you can see the only complete security system uh that can that can block uh using uh, you know, i'm gonna have to read your your this 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 thing we came up with jason you patented this you you copyrighted it and tech uh, trademarked it it's the advanced impenetrable reflective technology it uses this uh this uh, reflective technology to mitigate from having those laser attacks that we talked about last week on uh, on your digital assistant. So yeah, get the assistantshield.com, go pick one up, get one for the holidays. Security at the speed of light, get protected. Pre-orders available now. Uh, they're flying off the shelves, Seth. Keep your family safe. I mean, you, your family is not safe right now. If you have, <laughs> I, you know, it's funny, I listen to other podcasts and they're like, well, why, what could you do? No, one, you, you can't do anything about this. You can't do anything. Nobody came up with this idea but we did we came up with it jason it's and it's and it's for sale that's right it's uh 99 for the mini and uh that's the the model number for that is ass for assistant shield um mini dash mini and uh the ass dash max that that should hold the amazon echo google home and uh like apple home pod that kind of thing and then um it should yeah, it should it sh- we haven't measured haven't quite measured the home pod we hope it'll fit and, yeah, you can probably get it to work and then um or you can just <laughs> buy a couple of them put it around it and do the same thing and then uh <laughs> that we've works. got another product coming out the ass dash w i p e and that's a, a nice uh you know uh <laughs> cleaning cloth like uh one of those microfiber cleaning cloths make sure that your uh assistant shield is uh shiny you, you want you want to have it shiny that's right very important. It's very important. And you got to go for the video on the on the splash screen alone. Check it out. Yeah. And these are shipping. This is a real product. We're not playing around, guys. You, I will I will ship as many of these as I need to. 100 bucks <laughs> for the mini, uh, 199 for the max. Protect your family. You need one of these for every digital assistant you have in your house. Um, and uh, you know, all proceeds go to home tech. So get That's get one right. for the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> get yours today. <laughs> All right. Well, on to, uh, you know, matters of less import. Uh, I guess we have a show to record. <laughs> we do. We do. Turns out we had an interview uh, to this, uh, not only a, a, a big product launch, but a pretty big interview, Jason. Big interview. Very big interview. We're very excited. We had uh, G. Paul Hess, the chief marketing officer over there at Snap AV, along with Charlie Kindle, the chief product officer at Snap AV. So uh, dual guests this week on for a great interview where we really caught up about a number of of developments, you know, it's been a very, very busy several months over there at Snap AV. So we, of course, went back and talked a little bit about the Control 4 Snap AV merger, talked about the new Neo Remote OS 3, uh, got into some updates on Oversee and where that platform is headed, talked about the C4 Yourself Day uh, coming up. And so a lot going on and, and uh, really had fun chatting with G. Paul and Charlie uh, to get the latest from them. So definitely be sure to stay tuned for that. In the meantime, what do you say we jump into some home tech headlines? Let's do it. Netflix recently announced its service would stop working on older Roku players and older Samsung smart TVs, but with only a brief error message saying Netflix will no longer be supported on a small number of older devices due to technical limitations. This was, of course, rather cryptic and people were wondering what was going on. Now the company has offered more details about why it is ending support for these devices next month. Speaking to Gizmodo, a Netflix spokesperson said the issue was that these older devices run Windows Media DRM, 
a digital rights management service which has since been replaced by Microsoft Play Ready. Netflix has used Play Ready since 2010, as it is easier to get content from movie studios and other providers in that format. From December 2nd, these older devices, which are not able to upgrade to Play Ready, will unfortunately be locked out. Some uh, super old technology uh, getting a little update, it seems. Because uh, I, I remember Windows Digi- Digi- Windows Media DRM, that's super old. And if uh, Play Ready has been around since 2010, I mean, even if there was uh, some time for that to mature and actually get out into the... I'm, I'm, I'm not sure when Play Ready was actually released, but if they've been using that since Play, you know, Play Ready since 2010, it's only a matter of time before some of the old, older devices stop working. Yeah. Uh, stop stop working. Right. And, and this is one of those stories, I, I think it gets a lot of attention because of the headline. But if, if you dig in, you know, it's, this is, we're talking about certain Samsung TVs from back in 2010, 2011. Uh, so pretty old at this point, uh, some Vizio TVs, some older Roku devices. Uh, so again, most of these devices are coming up on a decade old. Uh, and you know what, you go out nowadays and buy uh, such an inexpensive little streaming device to go solve this problem. So Thankfully, not a huge issue, but but certainly an inconvenience for for people affected by it. Yeah, I mean, you can get a Roku device for like thirty bucks that will yeah. blow out of the water in performance. Whatever that's right, you're you're trying to attempt to use uh, the Netflix app on. So yeah, yeah, go go get a new device. It's uh it's time. It's time. Treat yourself. You'll have enough money to go buy an assistant shield. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Disney's new streaming service, Disney Plus, has already seen, I was going to say 1 million, but no, 10 million signups since launching Tuesday, the company announced on Wednesday. Disney's stock was up 7.35% on Wednesday's close, adding more than $13 billion to its market cap, which sits at $268 billion. Netflix shares went down 3.1%. Sorry. Um, maybe, maybe they should have waited on canceling those older players. Uh, at six, <laughs> at uh, seven bucks a month or seventy dollars a year, Disney Plus is significantly cheaper than competitors such as Netflix, which charges twelve ninety nine for the most popular standard HD plan. Uh, Disney is offering a seven day free trial, so likely not all the signups represent customers who will continue to pay for the service. Disney did not immediately respond to a question about whether the ten million sign up figure included pre-sales. Mm-hmm. Jason, I know you and I took advantage of those awesome pre-sales and paid we for did. What, three years up front. Yeah. Uh, for, for roughly what, I think it was like $70 or something. It wasn't much. H- have you had a chance? Yeah, it worked out to like four, four or $5 a month, I think is, is what the, so you saved, saved a uh, 30% or something like that. Uh, I have not, not at length, but I have installed the app on, uh, on my phone as well as on our Apple TV and had a chance to kind of swipe around and, and see the content and get a feel for the app. And, uh, it all looks great. We're, we're excited to have it. I, th- I think the kids will, the kids will really enjoy it. Uh, primarily there's certainly, it's not exclusive to kids. There's plenty of content on there that we'll probably enjoy as well. But I know in our household, the biggest thing that, that, uh, we're excited about is, is all the great stuff on there for the kids. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Uh, my, my wife and I, we've checked it out a little bit. Uh, it's missing a couple of things that you would think, uh, one of these table stakes things that like, um, if you go and watch a movie and you want to go back and pick up where you left off, um, the main screen doesn't have like continue watching like you have to go dig through and find i think we were watching oh like i a, hadn't no, i hadn't noticed that yet but yeah that's a bummer yeah so it's like the little small stuff like that i'm sure they'll add back in later on as as but i i did think the app was uh you know for the amount of content that it has in it they did a really good job of like organizing things and setting it up like where it's easy unlike apple plus uh it's easy to find what you want to watch so i was pretty happy with that i haven't seen much i saw i, I watched the beginning of the imagineering thing uh i don't know it's a documentary about all the imagineers i saw that i haven't watched it yet i mean the the, the just the intro intro to that gave me chills like on the back of my neck like all right this this show is made specifically for me i'm gonna I'm going to watch it. So very cool. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about seeing that one. Uh, and of course, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of good stuff on there. Uh, I'm just blown away with the amount of content that I have already canceled Hulu. So sorry, Hulu. Yeah. You're not getting our, our, uh, so someone had bucks. to go. Yeah. Somebody had to go and it was you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 10 million signups. Last thing on this, I wanted to touch on, I was curious when I read that number to kind of put that in perspective. Uh, it's obviously a big number in a very short period of time, but um, just to frame it and put it in perspective, speaking of Hulu, it did say that Disney owned Hulu, uh, claimed more than 28 million subscribers in May. Uh, so, and Hulu's been around for a while. So 
you know, Disney's almost, uh, you, what, a third of that already, uh, basically, yep. over a third of that already. Uh, CBS says it took about five years to reach eight million uh, with their all access and Showtime deal. So, you know, by all accounts, this 10, 10 million is a, a very, very impressive number uh, for what Disney's done in a very short period of time. And, and this isn't the last of these mega streaming services coming. You know, we're going to see a couple of these. Peacock is coming, which is the NBC version. Uh, we've got HBO. Now I forget whether it Max is it HBO Max. This is like the yeah, Amazon that's the new music one. thing mm-hmm. for me. Like I'm not going to figure out what it is over time. So HBO Max is coming. It's got a huge catalog backing it, plus all the HBO stuff on top of it. Uh, so I mean, over the next couple of years, uh, I mean, it looks like you could get a ton of your content from like three or four of these apps. So should be pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, shifting gears totally here, Hikvision has marketed an AI camera that automatically identifies Uyghurs on its China website. We'll get to that in a second if you're not sure what that is. Uh, and I did pronounce that correctly. I'm shocked. Uh, only- I, I'm just shocked. <laughs> Only covering it up uh, days ago after uh, a website IPVM questioned them on it. Uh, The AI technology allows the camera to automatically track Uyghur people, one of the world's most persecuted minorities. Uh, Hikvision's product description states this camera supports Uyghur recognition. Hikvision quickly deleted the product page after IPVM inquired about it, and the new link now shows an error. So this is... uh, you kind of shake your head at this one. Um, this is the most racist thing I crazy. think I've ever seen any out of yeah. out of the out of the like it's... technology world at all. Like I'm, I w- I was kind of laughing about how Hikvision has been uh, banned in the U.S., uh, but now they can just go burn in a fire somewhere. <laughs> I mean, because this is this is literally a, a persecuted group that is in concentration camp cities uh, and persecuted for their religious beliefs. And I mean, the marketing stuff that they had was pretty disgusting too. So, um, stop using Hikvision. That's, that's my political stance on it. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. We don't, we don't get into politics uh, on the show much, but yeah, this one is really beyond the pale. It really uh, is just disgusting. It is beyond the pale. It's a great way to put it. Um, so, you know, from a technology perspective, it, it is thought provoking in the sense of like where AI is going and where video detection is going and what some of the possibilities are there. Uh, and and the whole conversation that can um, spin out of that about the morality of how this technology is going to be used, uh, how presumably already much of this is probably being used, and and where that all goes, and and, and again the morality of that is a is a an interesting and important topic. It's something we're going to have to face because we know this these types of uh, these. I mean, the way this was marketed was just disgusting. I mean, and 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 clearly like aimed at like the Chinese government and what they're doing over there. But that said, like nothing stops someone from developing a system very similar uh, here in the U.S. that targets another minor- minority, um, you know, that may have similar issue, not similar issues, but maybe similar issues um, to do tracking for law enforcement. Uh, nothing stops a private company for developing a product like this. So again, man, I, this is this is one of the bigger questions that we're going to have to grapple with as we move forward with this type of stuff and AI and 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 the things that these cameras claim to do. I, I'd be hard pressed to like actually say that it actually does this. You know, like I really question the uh, the accuracy of something like this. It's not just like falsely identifying people just um you know I, this camera told me you were this person and now you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life like that's that's where my mind goes and mm-hmm. like I, I just i don't trust look i'm a programmer <laughs> i uh i know how things are, get done um you you hack something together and you put it out and you really hope it works and and that's about as far as you can go with it and uh nothing a human makes is perfect and uh, to to rely on something like this that was made by people is is to to do these types of things I think is a is a big mistake as far as you know uh, the morality goes. Like I think it's definitely even a bigger mistake uh, for for them to use it in this manner. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So important story uh, we wanted to touch on, and, and again, I, I think it's a it is an important question for us all to stop and and ponder uh, every now and then about where where is all this technology headed and, and what are some of the the bigger questions of, of morality uh, that we're all going to have to face. 
<laughs> there's some chat. I mean, this this kind of stirred stirred up the chat room a little bit. But I mean, there's there's uh, Matthew saying that the government official there in Australia wants AI and cameras to authenticate people for accessing accessing adult websites. So I mean, that's that's a uh, a uh, crazy, crazy thing. Like th this is technology. Uh, it can be used for good things like securing your home and checking out what's going on, you know, outside your house. And it can be used for kind of awful things like that. Invasions of privacy or identifying people based on racism and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So like it can go either way. We just, you know, as humans have to figure out how to be good about it. That's it. A security flaw in Amazon's Ring Video Doorbell Pro devices uh, could have allowed ta attackers to exploit the internet connected doorbell to intercept the owner's Wi-Fi credentials, giving hackers unauthorized access to the network and potentially other devices on it. The vulnerability has been disclosed by researchers at a cybersecurity company uh, who note that all Ring Doorbell Pro cameras have now received a security patch to mitigate the issue. That is cool. Uh, I'm glad they found it because I think I have one of these. Yeah. Not that it you know matters too much, but I, I have one. I'm glad this is uh, how this stuff should happen. They should find it, report it, have it fixed. Boom, all done. Yeah, no, that's right. And and to, again, kind of put it in perspective, the, the vulnerability appears to be related to when the device is first configured to a local network. So the Ring smartphone app needs to send the wireless uh, credentials over to the Ring servers. Um, apparently, that was being done in an insecure manner, uh, which could have been intercepted. Um, so the article goes on to talk about how an attacker might sort of spoof, or, or, or I shouldn't say spoof, but kind of artificially create that situation uh, by tricking the user into believing that their device is malfunctioning, uh, things of that nature. So it sounds like it was a... a kind of a, an involved uh, exploit that would have had to take place in order for anybody to be uh, affected by this. But still, all the same, like you said, this is how it's supposed to happen. These things get discovered, uh, they get patched, and, uh, you know, the, the cat and mouse game continues. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's never going to be a completely secure system. Again, I'm I'm a programmer. I write this stuff. There's, there's always bugs. There's always problems. Uh, something like this being patched is good, but it, it also, you know, it, it's one of those things where they find a bug like this and they patch it and that patch could introduce a problem. So, like, it, it, there's always a, a, a cat and mouse and just a continuation that, that of this stuff because you're layering code on top of code on top of code to get things to work. And, uh, you know, it, eventually it kind of just, like, catches up to you where you're just, like, there's a bug 300 levels down and, and uh, that's what's causing up here 200 300 levels up something to happen that you didn't expect to happen so i that's right I, i'm glad this is how it's supposed to work though uh when something's found like this yeah, they can push out a patch and uh then these researchers can disclose that they found one so this this is good yeah good stuff indeed all right well all the links and topics that we've discussed tonight can be found in our show notes at hometech.fm slash 281 while you're there don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter we'll send you show reminders and other occasional updates about all the great things going on here in the world of home tech. Once again, that link is hometech.fm slash 281. And don't forget, you can join us in the chat room live starting Wednesday. Uh, usually around 7, 7.30, sometimes a little bit later with an interview uh, that we had tonight. Uh, you can find out more at hometech.fm slash live. All right, absolutely. Well, without further ado, Seth, what do you say we get into our interview? Once again, we had G. Paul Hess and Charlie Kindle, both from Snap AV. Join us on the show this week to talk about all of the uh, things they have going on there over the last couple months, of which there are many. So we look forward to uh, presenting this uh, conversation to you. We hope you enjoy, and we'll come back out at, after the interview with a few thoughts of our own. Hey, G. Paul and Charlie, welcome to the show. How are you guys? Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, doing great. Yeah, we uh, we understand you're taking a little bit of time away from uh, from an executive event there at Snap AV to come join us. So. We really appreciate you taking the time, and we're going to jump in to a whole bunch of different topics related to uh, Snap AV and everything you guys have going on these days, which as listeners to our show will be very familiar, is quite a bit. But um, before we do that, why don't we start by giving just some personal introductions uh, to yourselves here before we jump in. So maybe we can start uh, with you, G. Paul, if you could uh, just give our listeners a quick introduction, talk about a, a little bit of your background and, and what role it is you play today over there at, uh, at Snap AV. Happy to do so. Thanks again for having us on the on the show. My background is a uh, long time in the industry. In fact, uh, dating back to the uh, mid-90s 
working through college uh, and, and selling audio video gear for Circuit City and then progressed into owning a, uh, a dealership um, and, and was actually in that dealership for about 10 years before exiting that. It's, a, it's an ongoing entity. It's still a, a customer of Snap AV today and uh, moving into the manufacturing world. So my uh, first stint in manufacturing is with Elon Home Systems in a sales role. And nine years ago, I was very fortunate to join Snap AV and lead product. With our recent merger, my role has changed and shifted into leading all the marketing. Awesome. Well, we appreciate that. And Charlie, uh, all of our listeners are, are probably going to be familiar with you by name, but if you uh, would just give kind of a quick uh, quick recap of, of your background and again, fill us in on uh, on the role that you're playing uh, over there today at Snap AV. Yeah, I've, I've been uh, playing around with this smart home, connected home, home networking stuff for a long time, both personally and, and professionally. Um, I'm blessed to have been involved in the development of uh, quite a few uh, successful uh, commercial products in the space, uh, both at Microsoft and at Amazon. I've been with uh, Snap AV now for a year and a half, um, and I'm responsible for somewhere around 4,700 products that we uh, design, uh, manufacture, build, and sell um, under 18 brands now. 18. So I'm responsible for all product development um, and uh, um, uh, couldn't be more excited about it. Awesome. Well, it sounds like a, a pretty full plate, and I'm sure both of you guys are, are very busy these days. Again, I alluded to it a minute ago, and uh, quite a lot going on over there uh, at Snap AV. So let, let's jump into some of that. Now, I know you guys both uh, alluded to the merger, and, and of course, that'll be sort of top of mind for for many people, this this story has has been out there for a while and and has developed. But I'd love to spend a few minutes uh, just chatting about it and and getting your guys' perspective on on how you're seeing the world uh, today and 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 moving forward. So, talk about how this merger um, and I'll, I'll throw this out to either one of you to jump in here. Talk about how this merger really plays into uh, the vision. I saw a post from John Heyman, of course, the CEO over there at Snap AV on LinkedIn the other day, talking about really the importance of building a platform for the connected home and the difference between sort of piecemeal solutions of putting together various products from different manufacturers versus what you guys over there at Snap AV are trying to do, which is really build that that profitable, sustainable, long-term platform for the connected home. So, so talk about that vision and, and how, uh, with regards to the merger today, how that all sort of fits together. Well, the merger was really a result of recognizing the uh, industry's leading companies who offer the two best platforms. And we, we think of you know a product platform, which Charlie will, will speak to in the dealer OS and all those products and how they interconnect. But also there's a very important part, which is the dealer platform. And that are, that, that's all the tools and services that a company like ours can offer. It's not just the web portals we have, but it's it's marketing capabilities, uh, partnerships with our certified showroom dealers. It's tools that we have on our web portals to help uh, dealers and integrators uh, design and, and support systems. It's oversee. These are the, the, the dealer side of the dealer OS or the dealer platform that we're working very hard on. And, and, and as a result of looking at you know the two leading companies, We've been number one and number two together for a number of years in the industry. When you when you see CE Pro, for example, if you use CE Pro Awards as a proxy for uh, uh, who supports the dealers um, and who's delivering the best products. Excellent. Yeah, I can imagine there's a number of symmetry uh, uh, synergies. I guess is is the best word I could use there for, between what uh, Control Four has and what. Uh, Snap AV is bringing it to the table for the industry as well. Uh, you mentioned, you know, a number of a number of in initiatives that you have are, are got to be like complementary. I'm thinking more not so much on the like product standpoint, but from like even like a logistics standpoint. I mean, there, there's got to be uh, expertise that Snap AV can bring a company like Control Four uh, to things like shipping product and getting out into dealers' hands and that kind of thing. Yeah, it goes both ways. There's the two companies were very complementary in, in so many ways. And if it wasn't product, it was in services. And if it wasn't services and support, it was in fulfillment. And it truly is two world class uh, industry leading companies, and and they fit really well together in so many places. Yeah, and I'll just add that we're we're at this point in time now where uh, we're actually operating uh, now as an integrated company. The um, uh, I think ahead of schedule. Um, and it's it, for now. It's 
and moving forward, it's a single company. Um, there's a single product organization, a single marketing organization, single sales organization, um, single support organization. And um, uh, we're, we're, we've kind of put the merger behind us and now we're in execution mode. And it's pretty exciting to be in that phase. And it's, uh, it's it, you know, a lot of the, the hypotheses that were formed early for why this made sense um, have come to be true. And um, we're pretty excited about that. Excellent. Uh, so when you guys say you're, it, it sounds like you're making great progress, uh, sort of moving forward, putting the merger behind you and really looking looking forward to executing and 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 producing results, frankly. I'm sure that's uh, in the pre-show we were talking about that. And I'm sure that's what your dealers uh, are, are really looking for uh, at this point. And so talk about uh, some of those key things that you're really focused on here over the next maybe six to 12 months. And, and what are you really at the core uh, of this new operation moving forward, looking forward to most in terms of, of delivering to, uh, to your dealer base? Well, you know, I'll start at, at a kind of a high level, Jason, which is um, we exist um, to serve the professionally served uh, home technology space. Um, and the businesses that are out in the world serving homeowners and, and, and small businesses with their technology needs need a partner. They need support in order, in order to be successful in themselves. And we view it as our mission uh, to make them successful. And uh, as they're building their own businesses, they need to make some bets on who they're gonna who they're gonna bet on at, from a partnership perspective. And every day we wake up and and we want to earn that trust and be the the partners for those for those dealers and integrators. And we think about that along two lines. Uh, we talked about platforms before. Another word for platform is flywheel. Um, and we're, we feel blessed to have a have a business that is moving forward is is built around. Um, these two platforms or flywheels. Um, and as G. Paul mentioned, the first of those is uh, the platform for the home. Uh, it's centered on the brand, the Control 4 brand, um, and, and on the uh, Control 4 Smart Home OS, um, and all the products that go into uh, uh, homeowners' homes uh, that serve the family and deliver that delightful integrated uh, smart home experience. And then the other, and, and there's an entire platform and ecosystem around that. And then the other platform or flywheel is our, our uh, platform for the dealers themselves and to make their businesses successful. And that ranges for everything from our e-commerce website and our portals to our local uh, 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 stores and the ability for, for technicians to just you know drop by on the way to a job and pick up something they need um, and get local uh, uh, sales help. Um, all of those things come together into that platform for the dealers. And over the next couple of years, we're just going to pour more and more fuel um, onto those flywheels to uh, deliver more and more value. Excellent. Got it. Well, you know, I, th I think you've, you've alluded to it multiple, we've alluded to it multiple times in terms of this platform and, and, and serving the professional channel, which uh, I, I think both companies coming in and, and moving forward, I, I suspect no different, uh, no difference will continue to do uh, very, very well. Uh, zooming out just a little bit, you know, one of the big topics going back several years now into the industry is is this whole concept of, of kind of DIY or do it for me versus the established professional channels. And there, there's a lot of different narratives that go around about, uh, you know, what's going to happen to the to the pro channel. And I know that you guys at Snap AV are, are very bullish on the professional channel and, and the prospects for that channel, uh, for this channel moving forward. Uh, talk about why. What is it about uh, the professional channel versus all of the, you know, DIY and piecemeal solutions that I referred to uh, earlier? What what is it about the professional channel that you think uh, remains compelling uh, now and in, into the future? Well. Some people may have seen my presentation where I talk about the four or the five levels of the smart home. Um, and, um, you know, when we think about what it really means to have a, a, an environment that a family lives in where technology is invisible and ambient, um, and it's, it, it's just a, a home that you want to live in. It's not necessarily even a smart home, but everything works in a, in a highly integrated way. Um, you know, that's the dream, and that's the level five smart home. Um, the majority of, of smart home activity today in, in the across the, the, the broad 
um, industry is very piecemeal. It's it's ad hoc accessories that are bolted together with very limited integration. And it's really clear that if you want to really live in a complete smart home, you have to have a much more integrated experience. And the only way that's ever going to happen is with local professional help. And so we believe that that you know just as you know, the household painting industry, um, you know, it used to be the people, you know, did all their own painting in their houses. And, you know, now it's almost all professionally served. Um, and we think the same thing is going to happen in the technology space um, around people's homes. And uh, we view it as our mission to, uh, to make that happen um, and delete it. And so that's how we think about it. There's some really simple facts here. I mean, there's, there's going to be more homes in the future. There's going to be more technology in the future. And that's going to drive the need for the professional to help even the most tech savvy individual deliver those best experiences. This merger exemplifies how bullish both of the legacy companies are in this space. There is nobody that is better uh, positioned to invest more in this channel and to invest more in the pros to support that mission. And that's exactly what we're doing at Snap AV. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, sounds good to me. Um, and and I, I'll add on to that like um, thing that happens at my house is, uh, unfortunately, I, I come home while well, I'm at work at home and uh, something doesn't work at the house. Uh, I may be out on the road. I'm, I'm the CTO of the house, right? I have to, to fix whatever's here. And if I'm at the point where I'm just like, we, we've got, you know, I, I want to hire somebody at this point to come in and fix all this stuff that I've set up over the years. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, hardware. And, and, and products that, that have been coming out. Uh, there's been a couple of really exciting products uh, from the Control 4 brand uh, come out over the last couple of months here. I'm thinking of OS3, uh, which was announced right around Cedia time. And then, of course, we have the, the new Neo remote uh, that has just come out in the last couple of weeks here. Um, I guess let's, let's bang on uh, the OS3 first. And what, uh, I guess, do you have any updates of the rollout on that and uh, anything that uh, dealers and customers are taking away from it uh, that, that they like the most about it. Yeah, um, I think that you know that the what the Control Four brand has delivered recently is just more evidence of of how we're um, accelerating. Uh, you, you talked about OS three and the CDA time frame, and actually we, we launched OS three in May, um, and we've we, we've um, uh, had several updates since then. Uh, we launched another one at, at Cedia, um, and it's going very well. Uh, the one thing you didn't mention was the CA10 uh, controller that we launched. Um, this is a you know a a, a controller that is going to scale to the largest of jobs. Um, and now we have an entire family of controllers uh, from the starter um, uh, projects where you know a homeowner can get a Neo remote control and a and an EA1 con uh, controller um, for about eleven hundred dollars MSRP. Um, spend a couple hundred more dollars with the dealer to have that professionally installed. And for just a couple thousand dollars, they're in a Control 4 powered smart home, all the way up to the, you know, the, the, the mega mansions with, with uh, um, multiple controllers in them. Um, and, and so that's, that, that all happened over the summer. And just uh, last week, we, we launched NEO. Um, and I'm pretty excited about, about that launch. It's going very well. Uh, Neo is a um, premium handheld remote control with a touch screen and hard buttons. Um, and it's deeply integrated with the Control 4 smart home operating system. Um, one of the things that, that we've invested heavily in with that is making sure that, um, that existing Control 4 customers can get Neo um, in a very friction-free way. Um, there's no setup required um, by a dealer or the, the homeowner uh, to make Neo work with an existing Control 4 smart home. Uh, as soon as it's powered on, just get it on Wi-Fi, tell it what room it's in, and all of your uh, Control 4 smart home operating system favorites and devices all just come through automatically. Um, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. We're also really uh, uh, looking forward to, and we're already seeing it from dealers, how uh, the 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 sexiness and refinement of that remote, you know, it's Swiss engineered, um, and you know, if you ever get a chance to hold one, you'll you can just tell every detail about the the hardware and software has been uh, uh, crafted, 
And we think that's going to drive a lot of more interest um, into control for smart homes. I do have one quick question about the, the name. Uh, you kept the Neo brand. We, we did. We, 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 we recognize that this is um, the beginning of, of a whole new set of devices that we'll be bringing forth for interaction um, within the home. And um, uh, the, the key thing that's happened over the last four or five years in the tech industry is customers' expectations on the refinement of the devices that they hold in their hands or they see in their house has gone way up. And um, with, with um, uh, Neo, we are uh, setting the stage for the future and, and demonstrating uh, the high quality bar that we're gonna continue to drive for. Yeah, just an add on to that. Next week's a really exciting uh, time for us and, and our certified showrooms. Uh, we have a see for yourself day on November 21st. And that's where we uh, have worked very, very hard and very close with the certified showrooms to have their customers come in and experience the NEO uh, experience live and in, in, in first person. And this thing is so cool. As Charlie said, they can leave the homeowner um, end customer can leave that experience and take one home and connect it to, to their OS3 system. Right. I, I, I can't explain. Uh, people, people who listen to the podcast, I mean, we, ha we have a mix of pros and we have a mix of, of, of DIY and then people are just casually interested in home technology as well. So it's kind of hard to, uh, to, to explain this to a lot of people. But uh, first of all, a $600 price point remote um, of, of this nature, of this build quality, um, virtually unheard of in our industry. Uh, even up until recently, and, and and second of all, even if there was another competitor at that price point, you're not going to get programming for free. You're not going to get the labor for free, right? Um, like just identifying it into a control four system gets that uh, get, gets all that programming built into the, the 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 remote, and you don't have to sit there and waste hours and hours adding a button to the remote, adding a new page, adding another button. As as a programmer and and a product guy, I, I appreciate that immensely. <laughs> it's a, that's an excellent feature. Um, that, that, and, and a smart, a very smart way of uh, integrating the Neo hardware into the Control 4 ecosystem. Well, guys, I, I want to jump in here. Uh, you, you, guys, you guys alluded to it a, a couple of times as far as this sort of being uh, just the beginning, right? And, and, and the future for, for these Neo products. And so, you know, I have to ask the million dollar question. And, and if you guys can't uh, unveil anything, then that's totally fine. But uh, what is the future? Um, these are beautifully designed products. Seth and I have both had a chance to to hold Neo remotes in our hands and, and agree that that uh, the fit and finish on these things is is really top notch. And is, is there any sneak previews you can give us about uh, coming attractions from the Neo family? No, we have we have no shortage of of great products right now to talk about and uh, to for dealers to be successful in building their businesses around Snap AV. Um, and, uh, we want to, we want to just, uh, talk more about those. Fair enough. All right. Well, I had to ask the question, uh, let's shift gears here and, uh, talk about one of the topics here that's near and dear to my heart. And, and that's the, of course, the oversee platform and, and the remote monitoring and, and support capabilities of, of that platform and, and, uh, what the future looks like there. So this is a space that I've been following very closely. Listeners to our show will be familiar a couple of years back, did a deep dive study on, on this. And at the time, there was really four major players. You had IHEG, Backpack, Oversee, and, and Domotes. And now, of course, three out of those four, IHEG, Backpack, and Oversee, are all uh, under one roof. And so the that landscape has has changed uh, dramatically. And, and I'd love to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about that. So I know you guys shared some updates on the Oversee platform uh, back at Cedia. For anybody who may not have have caught those. What's uh, what's the latest with Oversee? Again, part of the the enabling dealers and integrators to run their businesses in the most effective way to be successful. Our commitment to that um, is evidenced through um, our continued commitment uh, to 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 um, deliver amazing remote monitor management. Um, and you know what we announced at Cedia was um, we are going to. Um, have a single remote man monitoring management solution uh, moving forward. And um, as we do that, uh, dealers that have, have bet on any of the existing ones will know that we will bring them forward um, as we continue to innovate 
um, in, in monitoring management. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know that is a big question. And, and, uh, as two very dealer centric companies that have come together, I, I certainly, uh, have no reason to, to believe that anyone would be left behind. And, and so, uh, you know, glad to hear that. Glad to have you, uh, sort of reaffirm that. Um, just looking at Oversee, though, in, in isolation, can you provide us with some of the updates there? I know, again, you guys released some new uh, features or we're talking about some new features uh, there at CDS, some enhancements uh, to that platform um, to continue to kind of make that technology uh, really stand out. And and I'd love uh, just a quick update on, on again, what, what's sort of the latest with uh, with Oversee? Yeah, the Oversee platform continues to, to accelerate in adoption from dealers. It's simply incredible to see the uh, number of homes coming online every single day with the Oversee platform. And while built on a really incredibly strong platform, you know, we continue to work on um, on uh, on supporting the scalability of that platform and, and addressing latency and, and any speed issues that uh, uh, someone may have come across in the past. So there's a lot of uh, work happening kind of below the surface, but on top of the surface, there's a lot of feature enablement that happens across the product lines. There's more support uh, support in MoIP. There's more support for third-party products. And we've got a, a very deep roadmap of, of new features and things to come. Yeah, and one of the things that I love about this part of our, our product and and um, services offerings is that because it's cloud-based, primarily cloud-based, we have the ability to constantly being, constantly innovating on it. And um, the, the team is deploying uh, improvements constantly. Um, and so it's, it's just, the, this, the platform is just always getting better. Great. All right. Well, we are starting to bump up against our time here. So we'll start to wrap up. You guys alluded to this a few minutes ago, and I want to give you another chance to to talk about it for anybody who may not be familiar with uh, with the event or or maybe the timeline of when it's coming up, it's the C for yourself event, and and I, I love this one. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what that event is, and I know you said November twenty first is when it's coming you up. Know, the, the, uh, the, how- the one thing that we know about uh, um, technology and homes is that for homeowners and family members to understand what's possible, they need to experience it in person. And so we have 225 uh, certified control four showrooms around the world in 80 uh, countries in the world or 80 cities in the world. Um, And on November 21st, um, we are holding a special event called See For Yourself Day where anybody, existing customers or prospective customers can visit a local showroom and see the full um, experience of what a Control 4 smart home is like. And at each of those showrooms, uh, the Neo Remote will be there um, uh, for customers to experience as part of that solution. And um, in many of them, uh, uh, customers will be able to, uh, if they're existing Control 4 uh, customer to be able to take one home with them. Awesome. Well, I think that's a great event, and I know it ties right into the C4 certified showrooms, which is is a big thing that that uh, has been going on for a while now. And I completely agree. I, I think the importance of allowing consumers to really see and interact with the technology in person can't be overstated. Uh, so I love that you guys are doing that, and and uh, wish you all the uh, all the success in the world with that event. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing how that goes and. And once again, we want to thank you both for taking some time uh, to come on the show and, and get us uh, all caught up on on what has been a very, very busy time over there uh, at Snap AV. If any of our listeners wanted to connect, uh, learn more, what would be the best way for them to do that? Well, uh, if they want to learn more about See For Yourself Day, uh, control4.com. Um, it's very discoverable. Um, all the all the information on the event is there. Um, and uh, if they want to learn more about the broader company, um, snapav.com. Excellent. We will include links to both of those in our show notes at hometech.fm slash 281. G. Paul and Charlie, thank you so much again for taking the time. And we'll look forward to uh, connecting with you guys again soon. Jason, Seth, thank you guys. Jason, Seth, see you later. That was a good interview, Jason. Uh, and I, I got to say, how do you feel uh, that, that 50% of the podcast was made up of uh, Circuit City alums? <laughs> <laughs> that may be a first. That may I be think a so. first. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's no, right. it's not a first. Technically, every week that you and I are on, it's, it's 50%. Well, that's true. That's true, actually. Yes. If you look at it that way, uh, every episode is like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, some some Circuit City roots there. I know G. I've had a chance to chat with G. Paul about kind of his history uh, and, and sort of coming up through the ranks of, of Circuit City and then owning his own uh, company. So he's uh, certainly brings a brings a wide, um, uh, diverse background, I should say, uh, to his role over, over there at Snap AV. And then, of course, Charlie Kindle, a name most of our listeners are probably very familiar with in terms of his background over there uh, at Amazon and in the work with Alexa and the smart home. Uh, and then, of course, over to Control 4 and now with with Snap AV. So really happy to have had both of them on the show, and, and I enjoyed the conversation as well. Also, also, it's Oversee. It's Oversee. I think we've we've confirmed that. It's not Oversee. <laughs> not Oversee. <laughs> Oversee right, is a lot well, more fun to say. Uh, I don't I don't think it matters what it's called really. I mean as long as the service works and uh and it 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 does what it's supposed to do. Like you know, they could call it anything they want, but I think Oversee Oversee doesn't matter. I th- I think it's a pretty cool product. Oversee it is. Yeah. <laughs> Oversee <Sounds> it better. is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on here Seth. We got another pick of the week. Uh another gem. You've been uncovering some good ones uh lately. This one uh I think came from uh from Matthew G who's with us in the in the live chat tonight as well. I think this came uh, from him, if I uh, am reading your note correctly, uh, 1967 educational film predicts the technology we'd be using uh, in the future. And I know we've got a couple of different clips, so we'll certainly post uh, we'll post this up, uh, hometech.fm slash 281. Uh, I watched, Seth, the shorter of the two that I think had some of the highlights. And uh, gosh, it's just always fun to go back and see, you know, how accurate or inaccurate these predictions were. And then just the the styling of things, right? So there's somebody kind of sitting down at a at a computer and and purchasing. I think it was like sprinkler or irrigation parts. Yeah. Uh, and so it just talks about how you could get online. Or they didn't use the phrase online, but how you could you know sort of connect to this portal or whatever they called it and look at these devices and then insert this sort of magical credit card. And uh, I, I always, when I watch these things, I just think about man you know, how the technology of 20 or 30 years from today is, is going to look. Yeah. When you, when you just see how magical this all seemed, uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, and now it's just so assumed for us, right? This, this stuff is just so commonplace. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about this. So I, I've tried to look this up and trying to figure out where this came from. Uh, so you you said the, the in the in the description of this it said ARPANET already existed so that's like the precursor to what we know as the internet now it was a so it wasn't a, a, a too big of a mental leap to go from like unconnected computers in the house to you know they're all connected together and you could have a big global commuter network um, but I, I found a couple of like comments in in the comments on that YouTube page and this may be a fake I'm not sure if it is it's really really well done and I'd like to believe that it's a it is a, a true True to think, because it, it definitely looks like something from the 60s. But, fake news. Yeah, fake fake videos. But also... Duped. It, duped by the fake news. I, I don't know. It could be real. Uh, but also, there's a there's a, a longer one that you alluded to, and we'll, we'll link that in there as well. And I think that was actually uh, like a Coppola thing that, that he did. Uh, it's super long. It has a crazy like concert at the end by like from like uh, a Puerto Rican artist, uh, like a bongo concert that everybody kind of sits around, and he like dials up on his big giant dial remote control TV table. Uh, it, it, it's pretty wild, but uh, it still looks pretty close to what, you know, we, we do today with, with few, except there's, there's a lot of video conferencing going on and looking up recipes uh, on TVs. So it's pretty close to what we're doing these days. Kind of what we're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you know, it, it's worth a watch either way. Um, not sure. So Matthew's in the chat room saying, I think this was made in a local neighborhood to connect to others. Uh, it was a test bed with video calls to next door. Yeah. So, so hard to say it, it's an entertaining watch. And, and certainly we we've seen some of these videos before in, in terms of the, the older videos and kind of looking forward at the technology. And, and I think it always does. Uh, it's, it's always thought provoking to watch those and really think about, you know, what, what does this all look like uh, 30, 40 years from now? They're, they're both good. They're both, like you said, thought provoking. It, it, it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Like, I, I think these are, these are definitely kind of maybe elements of their time. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not sure about the first one being fake or not or real. I'm just kind of curious as to where it came from. Cause it's definitely like part of a longer story, um, that you see put together like that Westinghouse one we covered with the giant thermostat on the wall. Um, 
so I, 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 I just want to see the rest of the video. <laughs> so it'd be kind of cool. Um, but definitely if you have uh, 25 minutes, check out the 1990 in house of tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's worth a watch in the concert at the end. Pretty good. Pretty good. There you go. The, uh, he, he, it was a, a 3D video. He's like, do yeah, you have 3D? I'll give it a, a copy of this to, in 3D. And the guy's like, well, I have 4D. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, and Don says cameras with AI looking for communists. I don't think anyone was forecasting that one. But I could be wrong. I could well, be wrong. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't put it past us as humans. All right. Well, if you have any feedback, questions, comments, picks of the week, or ideas for a show topic or guest, please do give us a shout. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is feedback at hometech.fm. Again, that's feedback at hometech.fm, or visit the website at hometech.fm slash feedback and fill out the online form. And we want to give a big thank you to everyone who supports the show, but especially those who are able to financially support the show through our Patreon page. If you don't know how about our Patreon page, head on over to hometech.fm slash support to learn how you can support Home Tech for as little as a dollar a month. Any pledge over five bucks a month gets you a big shout out on the show, but every pledge gets you an invite to our private Slack chat, The Hub, where you and other supporters of the show can gather every day for the inside baseball conversations about all aspects of home technology. Absolutely. And if you're looking for other ways to support the show, we would definitely appreciate leaving a review on iTunes or on the podcast app of your choice. Those reviews definitely help more people find the show. So if you're a fan of, of the podcast, we'd really appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to uh, go leave us a review and let us know how we're doing. And Home Tech is a proud member of the Technology.fm Collective of Podcasts. You can find other great shows like Home On, The Smart Home Show, and DTNS over there at Technology.fm. All right, Seth. Well, that'll do it for our show this week. I hope you uh, hope you have a great weekend and that you don't uh, you know that you don't freeze. Try to stay warm in that mid sixties weather. I think I think the cold weather is over tonight. I think I don't think it's going to get. I think it gets down to the fifties. You know, we get the space heaters out. We're you know doing our thing, and then you Light get a back fire. Up. <laughs> you know, the fire pit has already you know already happened because like when we get weather like this, and you can get outside and there's like no bugs or anything because they all yeah. die in the cold weather. Uh, like it, it, it's well worth it to get out there in front of a fire pit and go some. Oh, I'd imagine. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. So, hey, uh, one more plug, assistantshield.com, you know, if you want to protect your family. Yeah. Indeed. Make sure you get over there. Get, get protected. Lasers. <laughs> it's real. Yep. All right. Seth, have a great weekend, man. We'll talk to you next week. You too. Have a good one. All right. Take care.